Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we discussed about Docker file. So think of your Docker file as the blueprint or the recipe for building a Docker image. It's a, simply a text file that contains a series of commands and instructions. The Docker daemon reads these instructions, executes them uh, one by one, and as a result, creates a new layered Docker image for us. So far, we have learned that containers are fantastic isolated and portable units for running our applications. But this very strength introduces a critical challenge we have to address, data persistence. Let's be perfectly clear about one fundamental characteristics of containers. They are ephemeral. What that means is uh, they are temporary and disposable. By design, when you stop and remove a container, everything that happened inside the container is gone. Let me give you a concrete example. Imagine you are running a database like Postgres inside a container. You start it up and your application connects to it and users start creating accounts, uh, writing posts and saving data. Now, all that data is being returned to this uh, database's default storage located inside the container's uh, write table layer. Now, what happens if that container crashes or if you need to deploy a new version of the database image? You will do a docker stop and then you will do a docker rm to remove the old container and start a new one. Now, when you do that, all of your user data, all the posts, all the accounts, they are gone forever. That's a catastrophic failure. The reason for this is the layered architecture of docker images. The containers file system is a stack of read-only layers from the image with a thin temporary writable layer on the top. All the changes, every file created, every byte modified live in this temporary layer. No container, you don't get the writable layer. So all these are your read-only layers. And this is where your data gets written. So if you don't have your container, you will not have this writable layer as well. So the problem statement is this. How do we manage stateful applications in a stateless ephemeral environment? How do we ensure our precious data outlives the container it was created in? The answer, as you might have guessed, is to store the data outside the container's lifecycle and that's where Docker volumes and bind mounts comes into play. So let's talk about your uh, volumes for data persistence. Docker provides several mechanisms to solve the ephemerality problem, all of which allows us to decouple our data from the container itself. We call this collectively storage options for data persistent. At its core, the concept is simple. Instead of letting our application write data to the container's local file system, we mount an external storage location into the container's file system. The application writes to, let's say, var, lib, mysql as it normally would, but because the directory is actually mounted to a volume, the data is physically being stored on the Docker host or even on a remote cloud server completely independent of this container. This is a familiar concept if you have worked with virtual machines or even USB drives. You are attaching an external storage device to your system. Now, Docker offers three main types of storage mounts and it's crucial to understand the differences between them. We have volumes, we have bind mounts, and then we have TMPFS mounts. Let's break down each one starting with two main categories of volumes. So first up, we have volumes. Think of these as storage units managed by Docker. They are best practice for persisting data in Docker. When you create a volume, Docker stores it in a dedicated directory on the host machine, typically under var lib docker volumes on your Linux machine. The key here is that Docker daemon is in control. This makes volumes portable and secure as their implementation is abstracted away from the user. So if you're on Linux machine, so here under this var uh, lib docker you should be able to find uh, volumes 
so here and uh, this is where all of your volumes would be stored for us now when we talk about your volumes there are two types of volumes we have the anonymous volumes and then we have the named volumes so let's talk about each of this one by one so first let's talk about the anonymous volumes now these anonymous volumes are created automatically on the fly usually when you use the hyphen v flag in your docker run command but only specify the path inside the container so something like uh, let's say docker run hyphen v and then let's say uh, slash var slash www slash html and then uh, let's say apache 2 for example so here i'm just specifying the path this is inside the container so this becomes my anonymous volumes or uh, when you are using the volume instruction within your docker file so in this case docker will create the volume but it will give a random meaningless name it will give a long hash the problem is that it's very difficult to reference again using this anonymous volumes if you remove the container this anonymous volume will typically be left orphaned unless you use the hyphen hyphen rm flag or prune it manually they are useful for temporary disposable data but not for anything uh, you truly care about long term and then you have the named volumes now this is what you should 99 percent of the time for persistent data you will explicitly create and name the volume the command for this would be docker volume create and then the name of the volume or use it in the run command and docker will create it if it does not exist so here in this case if you see this is my named volume so here this is another example um, these are my named volumes so the advantage of this is i can use this name to reference the volumes again i will be showing you examples for this in the next uh, session in this session just try to understand the different uh, uh, types of volumes that we have so you can see the difference you will have a clear human readable name right this volume is now a first class citizen in your docker environment you can list it using docker volume commands you can inspect it and most importantly you can easily attach it to a new container using this name and if your container dies you can start a new one and point to, to the same uh, volume your data is perfectly intact this is persistence done right now let's talk about the second main type which is your bind mounts bind mounts are very different instead of docker managing a special location a uh, bind mount directly maps a specific file or directly from the host machine into the container you are essentially creating a two way mirror for this you can use the hyphen v flag as well but by providing an absolute path on the host machine so here this will be the command for that so here um, i am creating a mount uh, point this is my host machine and this is my container machine and this becomes a two way mirror so in this case this uh, uh, whatever this slash app directory that i have defined now this is directly linked to my host machine directory so any changes i do in one of this uh, path is immediately reflected on the other so this is where i can make use of your bind mounts so what are bind mounts fantastic for they're fantastic for development imagine you're developing an application you can mount your local source code into the container you can edit the code in your favorite ide on your host machine and the changes are immediately live inside the container without needing to rebuild that image it's a huge productivity booster and what they're not great for they're not great for production persistence why because they tie your container to the file system of a specific host machine you lose the portability that docker provides the application might break if the path does not exist on a different host machine therefore use named volumes for data in production and bind mounts for development and providing configuration files finally the third and less common type tmpfs mounts now tmpfs mounts are the odd one out they don't persist the data at all in fact they do the opposite when you create a tmpfs mount you are telling docker to store the data in the host machine's memory only so here this is the command or the more modern one which is hyphen hyphen mount flag so if 
tmpfs does not persist our data then why would you use this this is used for temporary sensitive or high performance data that you never want to be returned to disk think of temporary session caches uh, swap files or storing temporary secrets the data is blazingly fast because it's in the ram and it vanishes the moment the container stops it's the ultimate ephemeral storage in the next session we will be doing hands on on this i'll be showing you the various commands as to how you can create these volumes so to quickly recap the problem is that the containers are ephemeral their file system dies with them the solution for this is to use storage mounts to decouple data from the container life cycle uh, we have the named volumes the go to for production data persistence managed by docker portable and reliable then you have bind mounts perfect for development for syncing host code with the container tied to a specific host machine and then you have tmpfs mounts for non persistent in memory storage for sensitive or high speed temporary data and that brings us to the end of the session like i said in the next session we will talk more about using the hyphen v flag and the hyphen hyphen mount flags uh, managing the volumes using the docker volume create docker volume ls so various uh, volume commands and a hands on session as well to persist data for a database container if you found this session helpful please hit that like button subscribe to the channel for more content and let me know in the comments section if you have any queries Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.